Let's get it started with Abby, who's on the line in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Abby, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. I'm happy um, to. Just a quick, um, I was an elementary teacher, and I got my master's during that time. We moved, and I had four kids, so I kind of quit teaching. Um, my kids are between the ages of nine and four, mm-hmm. and my last two are going to be kindergarten in two years. So I need to figure out what's next. Okay. Um, I currently work part-time but I'm probably going to need something a little bit more once they go to school. Okay. What what did you get your master's in? Was it education? It was an education, yes. Okay. And let's look at our timeline here. What do you think the soonest is that you would be able to commit to full time? Um, I would guess in that two years because they go back in the two years, the August of 2021. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure I heard that right. You were, You are on purpose you threw a lot of information at me i love it you're ready to go so my (laughs) my my question is do you have anything that you're wondering about it's in the back of your mind maybe it's at the forefront of your mind it's your heart's full and you're calling me because you go okay ken i i kind of know what i want to do and i need confirmation or i know what i want to do and i just need some help of figuring out a plan to get there or i have no idea what's going on I kind of have no idea. Um, I know I know what I don't want to do. I, I don't think I want to go back to teaching. Okay. Why? Um, just because of the politics that are in it now, mm. and just the uh, it's just a lot tougher now than I think it was when I was there. Yeah, I you get know, that. Seven, ten years ago. Okay, but let's let's look at some clues. Okay, so let's go back. What about okay. what about being an elementary school teacher? Did you enjoy? The kids. I love the kids. Okay. Love the kids. Would you say that that passion still exists, even though we don't know what it is just yet, but you have a passion for helping young people? Um, Yes and no. Having my own children now, I feel like they take up most of my energy and time. Uh Okay. Yes. However, that's not going to go away. You're going to go back to work in two years, and uh, they're going to get a lot of your passion and time. So I wouldn't necessarily, my point is, is what we need to do is get some clues here as to what you love to do. But let's start with what you're best at doing. So I want to know okay. top of the list. You've heard me do this with other callers. Let's do it for you. No excuses. Don't qualify anything. Just boom. The things you do better than anything else that you do, what are they? Um, probably my kids. <laughs> I'm, I'm a good parent. Um, I, I do like to decorate. Hold on a second. We're not there um, yet. We're not there yet. I don't want you to tell me what you like to do. I want you to tell me what you're good at. What are you good at doing? You've got skills. You've got talents. You've got strengths. What are they? If you're a good parent. Well, okay, good. Tell me more about that. What does that mean? You're good at talking to people. I'm good at, um, communicating, making connections with people. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So give me an example of how you communicate and connect. Um, Just talking in my current job, I am constantly talking to, um, I actually work for a university, so I'm constantly talking to students and helping them figure out, I guess, what they want to do. (laughs) Interesting. So when you're talking with these students, uh, part of your communication and connecting is, I'm guessing, you tell me if I'm wrong, is that you're asking questions. You're listening intently, analyzing why you're listening. Stop me if I've been incorrect yet. Nope, you're correct. Okay. You're analyzing, and then after you're done analyzing and discerning, you begin to suggest and make some some uh, points that are designed to steer them and help them get answers to their questions. Right? Correct. How does it feel when you do that for them? It feels great. It feels like I'm helping them. Oh, interesting. So now uh, let's look at, is there anything else on the top of your talent list? We know communicating and connecting. I think you need to mention, I think I, I think so. Would you put the ability to discern as your discernment a strength? Yeah. Yeah. Eh, you're not sure. <gasps> eh. No. <laughs> okay. So you see what I'm saying? What else is on the top of that talent strength skill list? Anything else? Mm, not that I can think of right now. Okay. All right. Let's move over to passion. Work, functions, a role. I mean, we know we've got some clues already. You said you liked, did you say you like decorating? Is that what you said earlier? 
I, I do, yes. Okay, great. So let's say decorating, but what about this, what about communicating and connecting with the students or people do you love most? When you're using those talents of communicating with others and connecting with them, what do you love most about that role? What's that function that you go, oh, I really enjoy that. It gives me energy. I guess that's, that's where I'm stuck. I'm not really sure. Um, what's next, where, where that goes. No, no. See, you're doing too much thinking. I'm not asking you to think. I'm thinking for you. I want you to answer the question, what do you love most about communicating and connecting with others? What do you love? I love that they come back and say, you know, thanks for helping me. Right, <laughs> yeah. I guess the feedback. Right. So my point is, did, would you rather communicate with people about their decorating needs, interior decorating? Because there's the only other clue you've given me. Or mm-hmm. would you like to be in a situation where you're connecting with people, you're communicating and connecting with them uh, to help them in an area of their life? So helping them with behavior or helping them uh, with taking next steps. So let's call it yes. guidance. Which of the two would you be more fired up about? Definitely the second one. Okay. Do you, but you see, it's starting to feel good, doesn't it? Yes. Right. So you're overthinking, how am I going to get there? I'm not worried about how you're going to get there. I want to know where you want to go. So just for fun, without thinking anymore, if I gave you a job right now that makes the money you need to make, and you are using your communication skills and connecting skills to help people, who are the type of people that you would get excited about giving advice? Or tell me the advice, the problems you'd most get excited about solving. Um, probably parents. I, I really am passionate about helping parents okay. help their kids. There you go. Where help help them how? What issues with kids do you get most fired up about? Um, behavior mm-hmm. um, and just having time for them, spending time with them, quality time with them. Okay, great. So now here's where we are at, Abby. We've got ourselves a working purpose sentence. It does not paint you into a corner, you get a chance to just develop this. So this is, I'm going to give it to you and I want you to write this down. I want you to work on this over the next week and look at it every day and every night. Talk to people who know you well, who'll be honest with you. And I think this thing is going to give you some tremendous clarity. It starts like this. This is a simple working sentence for you. I, Abby, am going to use my top talents of communicating and connecting with others about parenting Okay, so now we've got, we're adding in another little skill set. It's a subject matter that you've got some, some talent and skill in. I've got some expertise there. So I'm going to use my abilities of communicating and connecting to talk to parents, to help parents uh, with their kids in the areas of time, scheduling in the household, uh, you know, behavior issues, nutrition issues. I don't know. You fill in the blank. But you've got to begin to say, how am I going to help parents and their kids? What are the different areas? And you can list them all out. And again, you've already given us something to work with, but this is the process for you. And then pretty soon you're going to go, okay, now I know who I want to help and how I want to help them because you're pretty much there. But you need to get that how a little bit more defined. And then we go, okay, now let's back into this. Who's doing this in my area? Who's helping parents in this way? Is there a national organization where you could work, you know, remotely? Again, you've got to begin to identify all the different ways to accomplish what you want to accomplish, which is at the end of the day, help parents and kids do life better. I'm being super general there, but on purpose so that you don't get locked up. But I don't know how I get there. Stop worrying about tight on how you get there. Let's truly define what there is. And then there is a path, I promise. Now, this is a good situation here. I want to make sure Abby hears this, Madison. Abby's a perfect candidate for a follow-up call six, eight weeks from now. Okay? And I'm pointing this out, folks, because this is not a one-and-done show. You know, this is now. I'm not going to take a call from everybody every week. We're not going to do personal coaching on the phone with you. But the point is, you make some progress, and then she gets back, she gets clear, then well, let's tackle this thing again. But uh, I'm all for the tune-up calls, the follow-up calls. Hey, can I make a progress? Talked to you five, six months ago, one month ago, whatever it is. And so I want you all to know that. Hear me. If you're going to be a caller, we're going to get you scheduled here soon. Uh, You've already called in before and you're still listening. Hey, come on. This is a show where I want to truly be that guy that walks with you. 